Hi again then guys and welcome to the 58th episode of Days Gone By, the review series obviously for the classic cars of Gran Turismo but also kind of secondarily to that the vintage cars. There aren't that many vintage cars on Gran Turismo, but over the years and over different Gran Turismo games, we have had some other vintage cars which are no longer featured. And thanks to a suggestion on the channel recently, which I'm very grateful for, we can now record PS2 content and have it fill the screen, which was my main pet peeve that I could not do up until this point. And so, thanks to Willem HE here on YouTube, we are now also going to be featuring PS2 content on the channel, and also PlayStation 1 content as well. And this is the first of such, a Gran Turismo 4 video featuring, obviously, the Ford Model T. Now this is a car which I miss, to be honest, from Gran Turismo's past. It's a car which many players, even of Gran Turismo 4, still have never actually driven because it's a car that you have to get gold on every single special license event to unlock. And obviously when you unlock the car, it's not going to beat everything else in the game. It can barely even beat anything else in the game. It can beat some, and some of the cars which it is quicker than on Gran Turismo 4 in the vintage category are going to be featured in this series as well over the coming weeks featuring some other vintage cars from Gran Turismo 4 as well, and I'm sure some Gran Turismo 4 players can predict what those cars are going to be. Now this particular vehicle is actually the fastest of the vintage cars which are no longer featured on Gran Turismo, because of course we do have the primary vintage performance car in the way of the Audi V16 Streamliner. That of course is still featured, and it's still one of the quickest cars on Gran Turismo. As far as vintage cars which are no longer featured, on the other hand, this one is the quickest. And when the Ford Model T is the quickest in any category, you know that the rest of the cars in that category must be pretty slow, and they are. They're still fantastic in their own way, but we'll get to those in coming weeks. For now, this particular vehicle does differ in some of its performance specs, of course, to the way that we feature cars now on GT5 and GT6, because back on Gran Turismo 4, there was no PP point system. Vehicles were not classified in that way. Now, if this car did have a PP level, based on its performance, based on the power, that kind of thing, I think that this car might have a PP level of around 200, maybe 250 at best, because the performance is not as bad as you might think. It's got a 2.8 litre straight four engine, it's basically a 2.9 if you round it up, and it's putting out 20 horsepower. Which of course isn't mind blowing, but isn't actually bad considering this car is from 1915. Now the vehicle of course does not have a price tag, because as I said you can only unlock it, and incidentally that is actually something which I miss from older Gran Turismo games. You used to have to unlock certain vehicles, and you could not buy some of them, whereas now, you can literally buy any car on Gran Turismo 6. You don't have to unlock anything. You can win cars, but you don't have to. If you can afford it, you can buy any of them. That isn't cool, in my opinion at least. I prefer it when you had to earn vehicles. Stuff like the Red Bull, were that featured on Gran Turismo 4, you would definitely have had to unlock that vehicle, probably by completing every race in the game or something like that. And although that might annoy some people, especially younger players, it's a great thing to work towards. The older Gran Turismo games gave you so much fulfillment when you unlocked those special cars, and this is a great example of that. You know, as far as driving performance, handling that kind of thing, well, come on, it's a Ford Model T. Who cares what its performance is like? It's not why you own the car. Of course it's slow. Of course it takes over 15 minutes to do a lap of the Nuremberg Ring, which, if you think about it, actually isn't that bad. But the more important thing about the car isn't how fast it is, it's just the fun of owning it. Now, as far as handling goes, it's not bad. It's actually quite a nimble vehicle. It only weighs 635 kilos, which is probably a lot lighter than you might think looking at the car. Now, with such a low curb weight, the fact that it has low power and even the horsepower per ton is not that great. 31.5 horsepower per ton is nothing to write home about, but the performance doesn't feel that bad. Of course, it's slow, but it's still fun. Through corners, you can get the tail out. You can even drift the car, kind of, if you want to. And the fact that the tyres are so skinny means that grip is easy to lose, which also aids in that kind of 
tail happy vibe which the car has. Now the performance isn't really high enough to justify drifting the car, but you could give it a go if you wanted to. Overall, this is a vehicle which I really wish they would bring back to Gran Turismo. I don't think that they will, but I would be so happy if they did. I would be most happy if this car came back to Gran Turismo, of course in premium form, and had a price tag of something like 5 or 10 million credits. I would pay any amount of cash for this car, because it's not about what the car can do, it's just about the fun and the novelty, really, of owning the vehicle. So, it's definitely worth checking out Gran Turismo for some of these forgotten cars, and that's it for this review episode overall, so I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.